All right, let's do the intro for my game together. It's going to be a cutscene that plays when you select new games. It's going to be skippable too, so if you start a new game and you don't want to see the cutscene, you can skip it. First, create a new scene, 2D scene. I'm going to add a animation player, and I also have my sound. I have voiceover, so I'm going to add the sound node, the audio stream player. I don't need 2D because it's not positional. So I'm just going to use the audio stream player. For this, I could add a new track, uh, add bus, and this could be music. And I could add another one, voice. So in my option, if I want to lower music or just voice or special effects, maybe here you can choose bus. So this one could be music and I could add another one. And voice is going to be this one, music and voice. So I will we'll be able to control those in the settings. So when those are done, I can select my animation player and then animation new intro. That's it. That's going to be the only animation it's going to play on start. Auto play on load. When the player is going to select new game and confirm he really wants to start a new game, then this scene will be loaded. So intro cutscene will be played, will be loaded and unload. It's going to be played. Let's start by placing the voiceover. So I will use the voice to paste the uh, intro. So let's try add track, audio playback and voice. And then I'm going to add another one, audio playback. And then I'm going to have music too. If I go in my folder for sound, I have my music that's going to go in there. And let's put the first voiceover of intro. Start offset. Let's make the time longer. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'm going to need. Let's zoom out with control and scroll. Let's go with the length of the music and I'll make it shorter if I need to. Let's try this. In a universe where the living creatures are all balls. All right, not too bad. Maybe the music is a bit too loud. So uh, now we're going to add some visuals. So let's start with the first sequence. The first sequence is empty space with stars. So I'm going to add a color rect. I'm going to make it full screen. I'll change the color for black. All right, this is my space. Then I have some stars just like that. Let's make this bigger. And then to do the uh, I want to do some kind of zoom effect, like you're traveling through the space. I think the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to have multiple stars. The stars are a bit too bright, so I'm going to go in visibility, modulate and add some alpha to them uh, like this. That should be nice. OK, with my background, my black background for the space and my stars. So I think I can change the object rotation pivot with it in the center, because now if I transform and scale it, it's going, going to scale from this point go to the beginning and key them all scale. Let's do it for all of them. Let's make the panel bigger a bit. So it's going to be easier. Now I have my keyframe at the beginning of each one. Let's look at the what I'm saying in a universe where the living creatures are all balls. So at the end of my text, I want maybe a small pause. There is a bit of silence and then there, there is going to be a kind of a flash and we're going to be on the planet and the next text will be played. Next text is one race of ball was starting to be overcrowded and had to do something. Now, this small part, I could go to the end. What I would like to have the first star, since they are the closest, they're going to zoom more. What I could do is time three for each size and then I press the key. So the flash will happen and after that they can stop moving and I'll just hide them. For that, I could get my color rect uh, at first. My color rect needs to be uh, visibility uh, visible. So I'll key it. Yes. And at the end, right after, I can set it to not visible and key it. So it's going to be shown or gonna, we're going to have the zoom. And after that, it's going to hide and the other sequence will start. So let's zoom the other one too and key that. So let's look at this. In a universe where the living creatures are all balls. So that's not too bad. So this sequence, 
we see the balls and this is the place where I say that they are overcrowded. So I'm going to draw a island. Then what we can do is zoom on this one and pan around the world and we see that there's balls everywhere. This is going to be the sequence to world. Zoom in this, scale uniformly. Now it's in place. You can see the blue line. It's really thin, but this is the line for the camera. I just placed it directly in frame. Now let's do visibility off and key it. This is my sequence too, so it's off. But I'm gonna ha I'm gonna place it at the beginning of the shot, so it's off when you start. And if you want to move a key, you can move it manually, or you can select here time zero. So on, on start, it's gonna be there. And you can also change the snap setting here if you want more precise timing. You can do 0 0.01, but for now I don't. I haven't seen the need for it, so I'm just gonna keep going like this. All right, after the space, this one will be on. So what I can do is place my cursor where I, I want the frame to be. I can duplicate the key and then change it to on. So then it's not there and boop, it appears. Okay, but in between those two, I want like a flash. I could add a new color rec. This one is going to be all over the space. And then it's always going to be visible. But the only thing different is going to be the visibility alpha. So let's say uh, from this part, I'm going to go in visibility, modulate, and alpha zero, then key that. And then go uh, when I see the land. And then now I can duplicate the key. And in between, I'm going to duplicate the key again, but this time I'm going to change this to full visibility. So let's see. One race of ball. Okay, what? Now I just need to hide the space at the same time the fade to white is full. So it's 8.7 for the time. So sequence 2, uh, I'm going to do it 8.7 and the same for the space. So they're going to be switched at the same time. So if I go here and now I play. These are all balls. Oh, yeah. Now that was a problem. This is still white, and if I go back to the beginning, you can see it. That's because at the beginning of your shot, you need to duplicate the key at zero. So now it's going to be completely transparent. You need to reset every variable. If you don't, that's going to that's gonna happen. If something moves, if you change the parameters later in your animation and go back to the beginning, it might still be there. So now with that, let's see the transition. One race of ball was the world. All right, so that's good. So now let's try to place the balls in the world. Okay, now I have placed all of those balls. And what I can do now is pan the camera over this. The way I'm going to do it is just move sequence two. So here I'm going to go in transform. Again, I'm going to go to the beginning to be sure that everything is set correctly. I'm going to key the position. Then I'm going to go to where it starts and duplicate it. So position, duplicate. Then I'm going to go to the end of this sequence and place the final, uh, final destination. So grab the move key, move tool. Um, okay, yeah. The blue square is a bit hard to see, but if we track the camera like this, about there should be good for the end. Now let's go on sequence and key the position. All right. So if we look at that, one race of ball was starting to be overcrowded and had to do something. It might be a bit fast, so let's do less movement. Uh, the ending position could change. So I'm going to remove this key, delete. Now the position is reset. Okay, so this time I'm going to move it just to about there, maybe. Mm, then let's rekey position. And let's see if this, this is good. was starting to yeah. be overcrowded and had to do something. All right, so 
The rest of the intro is pretty much the same. A bunch of translation, uh, rotation, and all of the basic transformation, changing the visibility. Instead, what I'm going to do is tell you uh, about some tips and tricks that you can uh, use to get uh, your animation faster. Like here I have a rocket, and this rocket is a scene. And in this scene, I have an animation player with an animation called launch. And this is only launching the rocket. So if I play it, just wind back and launch. So this animation, I can play it in my main animation. But the thing with this uh, is that you need a script to play it. But if this is a, just a general script, I give it the animation name I want to play and then play it when I call play. So in my scene here, in the, the main animation player, at the end here, I have rocket. I call the function play. But the thing with this is that you won't see the animation of the object rocket in the main scene. But in the game, when the game is playing, it's going to call play and it will play the animation. In your animation player, if you have a bunch of key that you will have to repeat, like when I have my fade, my fade white, if I want to, re to repeat that instead of creating each key, one at a time you can copy multiple key, duplicate key. So I have my fade here too. So you can copy multiple keys of that. That's easier. Uh, let's say my player already saw the intro and doesn't want to see it again. You can just add a button in your scene. Let's say my node 2D here, I'll add a script, intro cutscene. And then in this scene, I will insert a, add a child. I will get a button and skip. So when I press uh, on button press, I can simply call my uh, scene load and change my scene. So when the player click on skip, it just it will just load your scene at the end. And if you want that when the intro has done playing, that it loads your scene, you can just at the end here call the function on your cutscene script. And here you could have a go to menu or go to first world function. And another thing that could be useful is if you have a player, let's say you are in the game, you could also call your player movement from here. Uh, let's say that here, my player. Let's say you have a function move to instead. So you could disable your player. So the input from the player would be disabled and you could call move to from the animation player. Let's try that. I'm going to place a player and from here I could add a track called method, find my player and here insert key. I have my move to and here if you click on your on your key move to function in the inspector, you can give it the arguments. So my first value is the X. So it's going to be an int and I want you to move uh, one in X. That's it. The other one is int. And it's going to be zero. And when the code play, the, the player will execute this. And if your player has all its animation on it, it will play the animation as they are here. So that's about it. Some tips and tricks. And thanks for watching. If you have some ideas on what you would like to, uh, to know in Gundo, let me know. With that, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you another time, I guess. See ya.